Stadt kann sich ja nur noch an ihrem Rande ausbreiten. Hier gibt es noch Platz, um neue Häuser zu bauen. Wo früher Dörfer und Felder waren, entstehen heute moderne Wohnsiedlungen. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of my concert retrospective series. There's something about Germany that made Led Zeppelin perform at a very high level of musical ability in its concert venues. Whether it was the food, the hosts, the accommodations, or just the pressure of the European crowds, the recordings from their travels in West Germany between 1969 and 1980 are truly the stuff of legends and one of the most consistent places for anyone to revisit or discover Led Zeppelin's live shows. Our story begins in April 1966, when the city of Munich won the Olympic bid against Madrid, Canada and Detroit, winning 31 votes for the Summer Olympics of 1972. A former airfield turned into a hill of rubble past the war was chosen as a destination for the new site. While construction plans got started, the Zeppelin's first visit to Munich took place on March 8, 1970, at the Circus Krone building, just a day after their famous show at Montreux. This venue was played twice by the Beatles on their 1966 tour of West Germany. The Zeppelin setlist was a hard and heavy attack that included the soon-to-be-released blues number Since I've Been Loving You. Now the late 60s, a wave of spiritual and political renewal swept across the globe. Nowhere was this more evident than in Munich, West Germany. It was a time of cultural awakening, and in 1967, a group of architects unveiled a design that perfectly encapsulated the spirit of the era. Their vision was to create a space that harmonized with the motto of the upcoming 1972 Olympic Games, the Olympic Games in the green of short distances of the muses and sport. The result was a revolutionary concept that would transform the landscape of Munich forever. The chosen site, once a barren wasteland of Munich's outskirts, underwent a remarkable metamorphosis. With ingenuity and sensitivity, the architects transformed it into an Olympic landscape, seamlessly blending sports facilities with natural elements. The design of the main sports sites reflects a harmonious integration with the surroundings. By recessing the arenas into the earth and disguising heavy construction elements, the architects ensured minimal disruption to the landscape. The crowning achievement of the Olympia Park are the distinctive roofs, which mimic the contours of the land below. The roofs exude a sense of lightness and openness, inviting visitors to explore its vast expanse. Olympia Park Munich features several famous sites, like the Olympic Tower, Stadium, Mountain, Walk of Stars, and Olympia Halle, or Olympic Hall, with a maximum seating capacity of 15,000. Now, the 1972 Summer Games were unfortunately overshadowed by the Munich Massacre on September 5th, with its tragic human cost and violent finale. Altogether, 17 people were slaughtered yesterday, two in the Olympic Village and the other 15 in the shootout at the airport. We begin a program devoted almost entirely to the Munich atrocity with a report on the shootout last night. ABC's Lou Chaffee was there. The aftermath for Olympia Halle transformed the venue into hosting many events, thus becoming a popular concert hall throughout the 70s. 1973 was the first year for music, with 18 performances, including Steppenwolf, Two Dates with Deep Purple, James Brown, Robin Trower, Jethro Tull, Led Zeppelin on March 17th, Tangerine Dream, ELP, Two Nights with the Rolling Stones, and Pink Floyd. Led Zeppelin's concert was their sixth show into their European tour that raised the stakes for their instrumental capacity to make up for Robert's changing vocals. Munich was just one day after one of their most famous shows ever, that being Vienna on March 16th. The show in Munich was just 11 days before the release of Houses of the Holy, with four cuts from the album played that night. Jimmy Page used his white jacket on the opening numbers, very much in the style of Tampa in May 1973. John Bonham played his green sparkle kit, which he would use eight more times before the Vistalite era began in America. The set list retained the shape from the 1972 Japanese states that carried throughout their UK tour in early 1973 a backbone of things to come in the States. It was the last year from, and I'm gonna try to say it, Bronadar Stomp, or Bronwyer Stomp, which was played again until Earl's Court 1975. It would also be the last concert tour for Dancing Days. So because this is a two-part series, 
let's go straight into the music. Back to Munich, 1973. Enjoy. Um, April, here in the Münchner Olympia Halle,
Here is uh, a song of the fifth LP from an album called Houses of the Holy, which I suppose this is one of them. For at least four of us, anyway. It's about an affection for young girls. It's called Dancing Days. between a man and a dog. And because it's a very happy song, we've got John Bonham to sing with us. John Bonham! We didn't hear the applause, I'm afraid. He's... You can help us with this with a bit of top on the PA and uh, assistance.
Sheriff.